Welcome to Plowman's Backyard. If you're here for the first time, my name is Kendra and we are talking about seeds. Why? Because now is the time to be planting your seeds, getting your seeds germinated for gardening. And I'm gonna tell you, I've got a load of seeds. Yes, I have a problem. I know that, that's the first step. But we are gonna go over some of my favorite varieties here. Just sharing with you, if you're looking for some new varieties to try out, or if maybe it's your first time gardening and you really don't know what to grow, I'm gonna give you some great tips on what I like to grow. I am a huge fan of planting something and getting a high yield. And that's what I like to specialize in. So you are gonna to wanna to stick around for this video. First, we are gonna talk about beans because I love growing beans. Oh, they're so good. Fresh from the garden, way better than getting them in the store. So my favorite bush bean, that's right, I love bush beans, is the Royal Burgundy Bush Bean. Why? One, because it's purple, my favorite color. Two, it's because the yield from these beans, do, like they, you get so many beans from this plant. I've grown yellow beans, green beans, pole beans. I find that I get way more beans on a plant from the Royal Burgundy beans than any other beans I've tried. So Royal Burgundy is a way to go. You might think, I don't want a purple bean, but when you go to cook this bean, it turns green. So it's technically a green bean, just looks purple. So these Royal Burgundy bush beans, they are great for eating right off the vine, um, raw, cooked, steamed. You can even can them. I've canned lots of these. They are fantastic, even frozen. If you're looking for more of a dried bean for the winter time in soups, I do recommend this one. It's called Macuzalito. No, I didn't say that right. Macuzalito, something like that. Anyways, this is it is a smaller bean. It grows really well up here in the shorter um, growing season in our climate. And it doesn't take too long to actually go to seed so that you can collect these. So this is a great variety if you have a short growing season and it goes right to the end just before frost and it dries on the plant or you can bring them in and dry them yourself. But again, this is a good variety if you want just a simple little soup bean. And the reason why I like this, because just about any bean you can make into a soup bean, this is like an equivalent to having like a lentil. This basically is like a lentil in the, in the fact that you don't need to pre-soak it. It's just a throw in the pot, cook kind of bean, which is what I like. I don't want a bean that cooks for hours and hours. This is just a really easy way to have a good cooking bean that um, it's simple, easy, and it doesn't take too long. So I do recommend this one. And I think I got this one from Hawthorne Farm Seeds. So if you're looking for um, this type of bean, you can find it on their website. The next thing we're gonna get into is beets. I love growing beets, whether you're eating them raw as a beet salad or cooked, or maybe you just like the tops of beets. Beets are wonderful and easy to grow. My two favorite beets is the um, Bull's Blood. I specifically like the taste of the tops of these, but I eat the whole thing. So they're wonderful. It's a great variety if you haven't tried it. The other is a pretty well-known common beet. It's a Detroit red beet and it has fantastic roots. It tastes wonderful. I think you would really like it if you like beets. So go ahead and check out these two varieties. I think you'll be happy with that. The next thing I was gonna share with you is turnip or rutabaga. We've been growing this for a while now and we get so much rutabaga that we actually have probably a lot left in the freezer from last year. So I know I need to cut down on planting it, but we love having this for soups or special occasions for, we love mashed turnip. It's the champion purple top. It is one of the best. I find that it's not too woody. And another one that I have tried that I do like is Joan uh, rutabaga, but I don't have any seeds on hand, but those are the two top I think that I would pick if you are into rutabaga. Well, if you're like me and have a ton of seeds and you can't keep track of them all or you want to remember when you planted them last year. I have a hard time memorizing when I, each time I have to plant them and when my seeds are supposed to germinate. I keep a seed journal. Why? Because I am forgetful. But if you're like me and you need to have something keeping you accountable and something to keep track, we actually have a seed journal over at plowmansbackyard.com that you can purchase on our website. As well, if you are into seeds, we have some seed merch. Go check it out. We've got some tumblers, some mugs, 
coasters. I think you'll love it. Why? Because you're here and you're watching. I know you're a gardener. The next thing we're going to talk about is chard. I love growing chard. My daughter and I eat plenty of chard. We love it steamed with a little bit of lemon, a little bit of garlic. It is fantastic. So my favorite is the rainbow Swiss chard. I love having a variety of colors. Colors always add more nutrients to your plate and I do recommend it. And there's so many different ones to choose from, whether it's orange, yellow, magenta, it's fantastic. I love growing it even more than kale or spinach. Chard is one of my go-tos other than lettuce. If you're into kale, one of my favorite kales is a Lactino uh, dinosaur kale. I love it as well as the red Russian kale are my two favorite kale. Why? Because they're not super curly and when you're watering or if it rains, a lot of the dirt isn't splashing up and getting stuck in those little crevices that sometimes kale tends to hold on to uh, the soil and sand. These are so easy to wash and clean and they taste great. So I recommend the dinosaur kale as well as a red Russian. Another favorite of mine is growing celery. Only one that I found that I like so far is the Utah Tall Celery and my gardener sells it. It's great. You get plenty of seeds. The one thing about celery is you want to start it early and you want to make sure you, you water it a lot because it likes to have really moist soil in order to grow but it's well worth it. You get a lot of celery for such a small little bit of seed. Hey if you're loving this as much as I am then you need to be subscribed so click that sub button because we want you to stick around. We love having you. The next thing I'm going to share with you is my favorite cabbages. One of my favorite green cabbages is Copenhagen as well as April green. I find that there's not a lot of cracking with these cabbages and they last well into frost and they are good at storing. So these are some really nice large size cabbages. I really like growing them. But my next favorite is the Red Express cabbage. It is fantastic for making coleslaw and things like that. The one other thing about the Copenhagen, it makes great sauerkraut. So if you like that, that's a good thing to grow. But I love the Red Express cabbage for raw salads. It's really nice. The color is fantastic and it's got a good size head on them. So I recommend growing cabbage. It's really easy and it stays for a long time if you put them in the fridge too. It's great. Next thing that we are going to talk about is tomatoes. There are so many tomatoes to go over. I can't share all of my favorite but I'll share what I have that is my favorite. First thing is if you're looking for a red cherry tomato, this is a sweet million cherry tomato and you get millions. I mean millions of to sweet tomatoes on this cherry tomato plant. So one thing I really like about the sweet million tomatoes is you get a high yield of tomatoes on this sweet little tomato plant. It grows so tall and vigorously that you will not be left without cherry tomatoes. So these are great for putting in the salads. If I had to pick an ultimate favorite cherry tomato, it would be the sun gold cherry tomato. By far the best cherry tomato I've ever had. It's an orange yellowish um, cherry tomato, really small. It is not pear shaped, but it is very vigorous. I think we had one growing to be about six feet tall, maybe five feet tall and a really high producer. The, the taste of this compared to the sweet one million, it is much sweeter and it's got its own little zing, but I'm telling you, there's only a few places that I found that sell this. And this came from West Coast Seeds. And I highly recommend getting this one. I won't be found without it. It's probably my favorite one I think I have. The next tomato that is probably one of my favorite for slicing, putting on burgers and sandwiches, has to be the black from Tula tomato. It's kind of got like a really dark purple black color on the top part, like kind of like a blush on it. It doesn't really turn red, but man, the taste of this is phenomenal. One of my favorites that I grow again. Now, if I have to pick a Roma tomato, if you're looking for a Roma, there's plenty of Roma tomatoes that are great, like San Marzano, just your typical average Roma tomatoes. But if I had to pick one, it would be an Oxheart style Roma tomato. Why? It's got 
it's got a bit more plump, a little less juice. It's really thick and very fleshy. It's a really good variety. I'm really happy with it and I'll continue to grow these again. Not last on my list, but this is actually the giant crimson that came from M.I. Gardner. Last year, it was one of the first years, I think, that, they, that he had this out. Paid five bucks for like, I don't know, three or four seeds. Anyways, it was fantastic. It grew really well. We had a not a great growing season, so they didn't um, ripen on the vine, but they did ripen when we brought them in the house. Probably one of the largest tomatoes that I've grown that is um, a red variety tomato. So again, this is a really good one if you're looking for a good big beef steak style tomato, this would be it. The next thing I'm gonna talk about on my list of favorites is lettuce. This is my all time favorite lettuce. There is not, if I had just this lettuce only to grow, this would be it. It is called devil's ear or ear of the devils, depending on where you find it. We actually did find a company that has it this year. I'm happy to say that they should be on their way soon. I've been without this lettuce for the past two years and I have missed it tremendously. This thing grows huge and I mean huge. It's not necessarily a head of lettuce. It's more like a loose leaf, but it is phenomenal. It's beautiful. The taste of this, it's got like a nutty flavor. It's got a crunch and it's fantastic. Absolutely one of my favorite things to grow out of the whole thing here. It's got to be the devil's ear lettuce. Another one of my favorite lettuces is the butter crunches. And this one is called the pirate butter crunch lettuce. You can see it's got some different coloring on the tops of the leaves. It's got a crunch to it. It's really good lettuce. I love adding it to salads. I love having a bit of color in my salads. So I love growing this one. Another one is magenta. Again, it's got some nice red coloring on the leaves. It's more of like a, a loose leaf lettuce. It's a bit of a softer lettuce, not necessarily the crunchiest, but I do like having a little bit of this in my salad as well. And then we've got the prize head lettuce and it is more of a romaine style lettuce. It's really good. It's got a good crunch and it grows really well. So those are my top four lettuces that I grow. As you can see, I've got a lot more, but it would take forever to go through it all. So one of my all time favorite summer squashes is this here yellow squash. It's, it's basically like a zucchini. It's yellow. I love making soups out of this it is a really nice thing to grow it has high yields and the taste of it is much different from growing like a black beauty or a gray zucchini uh, I do recommend growing this but I also recommend growing the gray zucchini it's not as large necessarily as a black beauty but I love growing this for a variety of things whether you're making relishes we like to make zucchini burgers different things like that this is a really good one to grow it's probably one of my favorites and I probably get the most comments on this gray zucchini when I'm giving it away um, to neighbors and friends they love the coloration of this it's a really nice one to grow if you're thinking about growing zucchinis. Now, if you're looking for a nice cucumber, I have Ashley cucumber. It is really great. It's kind of more like a field cucumber. It's great. You can pick them when they're small, so you can make pickles out of them or just grow them out large, but it's a really nice variety of a cucumber. Probably one of my favorite cucumbers to grow is just Shindikiwa cucumber. This is more of a English style cucumber. It grows really long and quite thin. I grow this basically for putting in my salads, eating on um, sandwiches, anything you want. This is a really great variety for just eating fresh for anyone who loves an English style cucumber. Probably the best one I've ever grown um, that again, Shindikiwa, um, I get it at Hawthorne Seed Farms, another great company to go to. I don't think that you'll be disappointed in this cucumber variety. If you're looking for a good watermelon, this is a smaller watermelon. It's a sugar baby. Basically, it is what it says. It is so sweet. If you can grow any watermelon, basically we need a short season. We have to start this one quite early and it needs to be well watered, but it's really sweet and it's got seeds in it. It's a nice variety of a watermelon to grow. Well, we're into winter squashes now. Again, another favorite here. 
This one is called the Kabucha Winter Squash. It's a lot like this other variety, um, Burgess Buttercup Squash, but this one has a much superior taste and it grows larger. And so I've been really happy with growing the kabucha over the Burgess buttercup, even though I still like this. If I don't have this one on hand, I'll plant this one. But um, these are two really great buttercup squashes if you like buttercup squash. Another squash that got recommended to me by another YouTuber was the Crookneck Winter Squash. And basically it is what it says. It's got a little bit of a ball here and it's a, got a crook neck on it but it has a lot of flesh in it. So basically all the seeds are down at the bottom of the base of this and then the whole neck, the crook neck of the squash is nothing but flesh. So you don't have to worry about seeding so much like you would on the buttercup. Crook neck squash is another interesting variety and a good variety to grow around here. And now the last but not least is we're gonna talk about herbs. I love growing lots of herbs. We love every year growing basil because we like to put it in a lot of our dishes, a lot of spaghetti sauces, things like that, as well as I love dehydrating and dehydrating of herbs is really easy to do and you can save a lot of money by not purchasing your own herbs but growing them yourself. So um, I love the Genovese basil. It's one of my favorites. It's got large leaves. Oh man, I love the smell of basil. This is one of my favorites. Another thing that is a must to grow around here is dill. Basically any type of dill. I'm, I love the fern leaf um, dill. Basically you want to have the dill seeds for your pickles and things like that. And the other part of the dill is really good to add to like potato salads and things like that. So growing dill is another must. I have to grow it every year and it will reseed on its own and grow back every year as well. It just moves around wherever the wind blows it. But dill's another great option to grow. One of my favorite par parsleys is the flat leaf parsley. I think it's an Italian flat leaf. I love it. it it's not going to have like the dirt or the sand stuck in its little curly leaves because it's a flat leaf and it makes it really easy to dehydrate these. I do grow parsley every year and we always have more than enough parsley dehydrated in our cupboards that I never have to buy parsley. So growing herbs is really, really important if you use a lot of herbs. Another one that I kind of like is this large leaf sorrel. It's got a little bit of a bit like a lemon kind of taste. The chickens love it. They devour it whenever they come close and then I never get any. It actually, it's medicinal too. So another reason to grow herbs is that they can be used for medicinal reasons, teas, tinctures. You can save the oils from them, but this could also be used in a salad as well. It's got a really nice lemony taste, really large leaves. It's really tasty. Another thing that I like to grow, um, I couldn't find the seeds right now, but is summer savory. We also grow winter savory as well, and it is actually a perennial in our area. So I still have a patch outside and I was still in December going out, taking cuttings from it. It grows back every year. So growing herbs, not just for cooking in your dishes, but also growing them for um, medicinal reasons and things like that is highly recommended. Like I said, we also grow summer savory. It's one of my husband's favorite additions to our dishes. It does not grow back every year, so we have to re-sow it every year. But surprisingly, it cost $89 a kilogram at like a bulk barn. So growing your own herbs can save a lot of money. It's simple. You can grow plenty of herbs and dehydrating them is very simple. So if you're thinking about saving costs, don't just think about your tomatoes and your cucumbers, but think highly on your herbs because that's where a lot of the money goes. For a small little bit of summer savory, it can cost like 15 bucks. Anyways, I hope you enjoy this video on all of my favorite seeds. I may have missed a few. I'm not sure. But that should get you started on what you may be looking for to plant in your garden. It may give you some ideas. And even if you haven't heard of some of these, I hope it inspired you to try some new things. So thanks for watching. And don't forget to hit that notification bell because I want to see you back here on the next video. Love hearing your comments and how your garden is growing. And until next time, happy planting.